Hi everyone, welcome to the Libero Network. My name is Robin, and today we're gonna to be covering how to add exercise back into your life um, when you're in recovery from an eating disorder. So first off, I wanted to apologize for any noises or echoes or voices you might hear. I'm actually in my studio where I teach Pilates, yoga, and personal training. So there's other things going on around me, and if they're distracting, I apologize. Um, Sometimes it just doesn't get quiet in here. Um, so the reason why exercise is so important to put back into your life is because it helps establish and reconnect your mind to your body. So establishing a great way to move your body in a healthy and positive way to reconnect your mind to your body is really important and can actually help aid in your recovery. So the first thing that I wanted to say about this topic is, number one, above everything else, make sure you have the clearance from your therapist, from anyone in your treatment team. It could be your therapist, it could be a dietitian, psychiatrist, psychologist, but make sure that you have clearance. Your medical doctor might give you the thumbs up that it's okay to add exercise back in, but you also wanna make sure that you have the thumbs up from your treatment team and your recovery team. So once you've got clearance from your recovery team, the next thing is to find someone to be your recovery support person when you do go work out or when you go for a walk. If you're someone like me who struggled with obsessive compulsive exercise, it's really important to have that person with you when you first embark on re-entering the world of working out or exercise or just moving your body in general. You wanna be able to have someone that is completely and 100% in support of your recovery. So this person you must choose very, very wisely. Um, it could be a parent, it could be a friend. If it's possible, maybe your therapist or someone that's in your recovery team or treatment team can come with you. I know for me, when I first started adding exercise back into my recovery, once I was um, back into my daily life, I went with my mom to the gym and we went swimming. So it needs to be someone that is really close to you, that's going to support you, that isn't going to be triggering, that isn't going to have fat talk involved with the workout. You want to make sure it's someone that is completely in your corner and is supporting you. So the next thing is when you do discuss exercise with your treatment team, you need to establish some boundaries. Number one is the time that you're going to spend exercising, and number two are the days that you're going to spend exercising, the days that you're going to spend resting and recovering. So setting this up is really important because it ensures that you're not going to go overboard. For myself, knowing that I was uh, obsessive compulsive with my exercise, I really had to establish how long I was going to be doing certain activities, be it walking, swimming, Anything that involved moving my body physically, I wanted to make sure that I had an exact time amount that I knew that this would be happening. So setting up really strict time regulations to your exercise is really important. The second thing is setting up the days that you're going to be working out and the days that you're going to be resting. This is something you want to establish with your recovery team. So it's something that you want to schedule out. Um, the number one caveat to this, though, is if you wake up and it's one of your days that you just really don't feel like working out, be, be okay with not going to the gym. Be okay with not working out. It's fine. It's not going to hurt you. And, you know, frankly, that's what you are working out to do. Reconnect your mind to your body. So honoring your body signal to rest on a day that you might be scheduled to go to the gym or go to a dance class and honoring your body's signal that you need to rest is actually practicing what you're trying to work on. So the next thing that you want to have in place with your recovery support person that is going with you to these whatever exercise classes, walking, whatnot, is make sure that they are there for you to help you stay clear from any type of numbers. Numbers can be in all areas of a workout. They can be in the scale in the bathroom or in the gym locker room. They can be on the treadmill or the elliptical. 
This person that's going with you is there to support you and make sure that these numbers, if they are triggering, you can voice them to this person or this person can also be a form of support to help you stay away from these types of exercise to possibly choose walking outside as opposed to walking on a treadmill, or to swim laps in a pool with them, or even just play in the pool with them, um, so that you do stay away from anything that happens to have numbers involved. If you know you're really triggered by them, um, make sure you completely stay away from any type of exercise that involves numbers. If you think that they aren't triggering, make sure that your workout person or your recovery support person that's going with you to your exercise knows that numbers are going to be involved and that you have the responsibility to talk to them and voice your concern or voice if it's triggering to you to that person. The next thing you want to make sure to do is to be very, very picky about your instructor and who is surrounding you when you're in, um, when you're doing your exercise. So say, for example, you go to a yoga class and you're like, oh, this is great because I'm going to do mind-body connection. I'm not going to be triggered. It's going to be wonderful. And then the yoga instructor comes out and starts talking about her love handles or how, flap, how flabby she feels. And that can be completely triggering. And unfortunately, that's the reality of the world we live in. Many instructors are very, you know, they're well-intended and they're well-meaning, but they might say something that can trigger you. So it's your job, if something is triggering, to make the decision. Are you going to stay and deal with it and process it and maybe talk to your therapist or your, the person that's come with you to support you about this trigger in a very positive and constructive way? Or do you need to leave? Do you need to find a different space to work out in? Do you need to find a different studio or a different instructor? You need to be very, very mindful and very picky about who you let into this space. Be picky about what you're doing and really be aware of how you feel when certain things are said or you see certain things. And voice these feelings to your treatment team. The next thing, going along with lines of being picky about who you choose to be an instructor, you want to make sure that you choose a type of exercise that will not be triggering. So for me, when I was coming out of treatment and entering my life in recovery, um, going to the gym was really triggering for me because I would spend hours upon hours um, exercising. I was a compulsive exerciser in the gym. So it probably wasn't a very good idea of me to go to the gym right away, right when I got out of my treatment. Um, same thing goes for anybody that's coming out of treatment. If there was a history of some type of exercise that was done compulsively, it's probably a good idea to stay away from that type of exercise for at least a little bit until you become more and more aware of how to connect your mind to your body and how to really feel your feelings about where you're at when you are doing exercise. So when I first got into recovery and I was out back home, I would walk. I would walk a lot with my friends, with my mom, or I would go swimming. Those two things were two things I never did when I was in my eating disorder. So it was a good, fresh new way for me to experience moving my body in a positive way without being triggered. So the final thing, the last thing that I'll leave you with is Remember that moving your body and exercising is just, it's a way to reconnect your mind to your body. And it's something that we all need to do in order to really, really experience true recovery. You have to find a way to have a healthy relationship with it. It's not good to not completely exercise and it's not great to overexercise. There needs to be a healthy relationship with it. And it's just a learning process. And there's a lot of trial and error and you may be triggered. And I can guarantee you probably will be triggered, but the important thing is that you communicate this with your recovery team and that you're honest with yourself. You know, if something doesn't feel right, be okay with changing what type of exercise you're doing. It doesn't mean you're a failure. It doesn't mean that you aren't doing well in your recovery. It's, it's actually quite a success because you're listening to what your body needs and you're listening to what your heart needs and what you need to do to honor yourself in your recovery. So that's it. Thank you so much, you guys, and I hope to see you soon. Bye.